everyone, it's Maki. The new promotional video for Gundam Seed Freedom has been released. Isn't it exciting? Today, let's delve into the content of the promotional video. In addition, Mr. Mitsuo Fukuda, who is directing the project, has also released a brave comment, so let's check that out as well. The dialogue of Gilbert Juano plays at the beginning. He vanished into flames in Sea Destiny. Perhaps these words were uttered in anticipation of future events in the time before the film was set. Perhaps, like all the Creed's appearance in Sea Destiny, he might reappear in someone's memory or imagination. Furthermore, Gilbert Juno's Japanese voice actor is Shu Itii Keto, who voiced Shara in the original Gunnam. Looking at the entire Gunnam series, he's an immensely prominent star actor. It's likely his role won't be limited to just one line. Gilbert Juno says, Born because the world desired it. Taken at face value, this line refers to the coordinators. And it could also be interpreted to mean the superior coordinators. That's referring to Kira Yamato. However, the person shown on screen has blonde hair. He looks reminiscent of Roller Creek and Wise Burrow. They were born from the personal desires of a man named Adolf Flager. They came into existence for slightly different reasons than what Gilbert Juno describes. Of course, cloning technology is also born out of humanity's desires. If we broaden our interpretation, one could also think that figures like Roller Creek were born because the world desired them. By the way, in the first promotional video, there was a depiction of someone reaching out from underwater. Upon seeing this, some Japanese fans humorously speculated could still Lusa be coming back to life. I doubt it, but I don't think this figure is still a loser. Still a loser is an extended person who underwent unique enhancements. Indeed, she is an existence born out of the desires of the Earth Alliance military. What do you think? Do you believe the figure in this scene is a clone, like Rowler Creek? Or do you think it's still a loser, revived underwater with a more resilient body? The scene shifts to a battle. Attacks are being launched into the sky. It's a barrage from metallic bullets, not being weapons. It's likely the jeans that appeared in the first promotional video. Next, structures from the space colony plant are displayed. Kira Yamato speaks, saying, We haven't managed to protect anything. Then, a bluebird-shaped robot flies away. According to the recently released information, it's named Blue. Could it be appearing alongside Kira? Or is it with another character? Additionally, the background music playing during this scene is of the distinctive world somewhere. A music rhythm marked by a 3D time. Some might be reminded of Gundam Wing's endless waltz. It's a term that interprets humanity's history of cycling through war peace and revolution as a world. In fact, when the project for Gundam Seed was first started, the Gundam Wing setting was used as a reference. The element of having the first five Gundams was a particular influence. Then, Lars Klein's voice falls. He has a gentle nature. It's likely a reference to Kira Yamato. Director Mitsuo Fukuda had previously mentioned that there will be a shocking development concerning Kira. Perhaps he might be in temporary opposition to Lars crying and others. The scene transitions back to battle once more. 
We see the 105 dagger. Firing it being rifle. It's the Earth Alliance's official mass-produced mobile suit. Produced after the Strike Dagger. A distinct difference from the Strike Dagger is the Beam Saber, mounted on its hip. Behind it, the destroyed Gundam makes its appearance. Many viewers might recall scenes from Sea Destiny, where the destroyed Gundam was easily defeated by the likes of Destiny Gundam. However, it's an incredibly powerful unit that requires highly skilled pilots like Shin and strong mobile suits like Gundams to challenge upon closer observation. There's a large barrier being emitted from the front of the unit. It is a very powerful weapon even in this era. This seems to be a different shape from the arm-mounted barriers that can be remotely flown and controlled could it be an upgrade of some kind. Furthermore, in the sky, you can spot the Windham equipped with the Jet Striker. It's the Earth Alliance's latest mass-produced mobile suit manufactured during the Gundam Sea Destiny era. Given this, it's highly likely that the attackers in this scene are not guerrillas or terrorists but the regular forces of the Earth Alliance. The presence of the destroyed Gundam is intriguing, whether the remnants of Logos, which collapsed in Sea Destiny, are fighting alongside the Earth Alliance, or if they are merely utilizing existing destroyed Gundam units as weaponry is unclear. The destroyed Gundam requires an extended as its pilot. Perhaps the earlier theory about Stella Lusa's resurrection might be gaining some traction. However, I personally believe this idea unfortunately won't come to fruition. I'll explain my reasons shortly. And then, on to the next scene. A line from Kakarui Year as her resonates there are always two sides to everything. Leading the group. Lois Klein and other key figures are seen greeting high-ranking individuals. I mentioned in a previous program about the audio drama where there's a high likelihood of Shin Asa acting alongside Kiro Yamamoto. Here Shin stands beside Kiro. Both of them are dressed in uniforms distinct from those of the Earth Alliance and Zaft. This aligns with what was discussed in the audio drama commentary. It's likely the uniform for the new security system set up by Lost Crying. In the far left of the screen, a new character appears. Her name is Agnes Gibbonrust. Only her name and Japanese voice actor have been revealed. Her presence in this scene suggests her importance. Among Japanese fans, several topics concerning Agnes have emerged. First, there's the voice actor. Agnes is voiced by Hauko Kuwena. She also voiced Star Loser. That's right, unfortunately, it became evident that the reappearance of Stella Loser is highly unlikely. Additionally, Hokoku Washima has voiced characters like Notaro Badaro and Frey Oster. There are fans of the Gundam Seed series who say from this information, it's evident that the tragic fate awaits Agnes could another trial be in store for Shinasa. A small detail to note is that in a scene where everyone bows, Shinasa is the only one not bowing. If you're curious, you might want to rewatch the promotional video to confirm. It's also possible that his bowing just got cut off to, to timing. However, right after this scene, Shinasa speaks. How long are we going to keep doing this given Kakari Yuras has prior line? The new characters they bow to and the subsequent image of the destroyed Gundam firing its beam. This might be a hint. Are these new characters striving for world peace as allies? Or will they emerge as new adversaries? Let's pay attention to the emblem behind them. The letters are too small to read. However, it matches the number of characters in the World Foundation that appeared in the first promotional video. If they are indeed from the Foundation, then they would be an organization deeply connected to the destroyed Gunnam. 
Right after the beam from the destroyed Gangnam, missiles are seen soaring through. Could it be that Hathaway has come to help with the Shi Gangnam? There might be some who harbor such hopes. However, unfortunately, the design of these missiles differs from those of the Shi Gangnam. The chances of Hathaway making an appearance are very slim. And which missiles are symbolically portrayed in the Gundam Seed series? Exactly! They are nuclear missiles. Moreover, they are tragic weapons often targeted at defenseless civilians, such as the inhabitants of Prant. Giver Juno speaks, people forget, and then repeat the same mistakes. If one were to consider this, as a symbol of a major blunder, these missiles could very well be nuclear ones. In the next scene, Kira and the others salute while Moon Love Fighter and Ma and Ramius come to greet them behind the characters. There seems to be something resembling a mobile suit. Parts that look like thrusters are visible, and on the left unit, a distinctive round component can be seen. Could this be a shield in Sea Destiny? Mobile suits like the Zoku Girl Fandom, that appeared in the original Gundam series, made a comeback. Among fans, there are those hoping for the return of Giant or Gilgug in the movie. Perhaps this round component is the shield of the Giant, and the red unit on the right might be the Gilgug. The standard production Gilgug is green, however. The very first Gilgug was the red one piloted by Shazo. There's a possibility it could appear as the red unit piloted by Yuashmi Yaha. In Sea Destiny, Athran, who once went by the name Alex Dino, appears dressed similarly to the time. We can discern that he is undertaking some sort of infiltration mission. Furthermore, there's a scene where he's reviewing data related to Gilbert Tuano, and the Destiny Prime, the world's top secret, can also be seen. Perhaps the individuals to whom Lois and her group were going are trying to refine and re-implement the destiny plan. This course of action aligns with Gilbert Tuano's sentiment of repeating the same mistakes. Lastly, there is a scene of combat. The destroyed Gundam defeats the Jin. Inside the cockpit we see Agnes. Could it be that Agnes is piloting the destroyed Gundam behind her on the monitor? What seem to be smoke and sparks from the battle are displayed. Let's focus on this smoke for a moment. There are no explosions or flames, only rising smoke and sparks. It's highly probable that the unit darkness is in is either flying at a higher altitude than the others, or the size of the unit is incredibly large. Could she indeed be piloting the destroy Gunnam? Might she be a spy sent by those laws crying? And the others were greeting. The questions keep mounting. And have you all noticed? Isaac and Darka have yet to appear in this promotional video. They too are extremely crucial characters in the Seed series. Yet, yeah, appearing before the likes of Isaac and taking on a prominently visible role is Agnes. It's clear that she holds a significantly important role in this story. Why can't you all understand? A line filled with anger and frustration from Kiro Yamato is delivered. With this line, a tense scene unfolds on the screen. We see Lars crying and others in a meeting with individuals from Plant. From the postures of some who are standing up, and the surprised expressions on others, it's likely that the relationship isn't on the best of terms. Then the scene blurs, and we see a figure reaching out to Kira. Who do you think this is? Do you think it's Shrek to Mercury? Unfortunately, you're mistaken. It's not me or in Rembrandt either. They are living in peace. Normally, one would think it's Lars crying. It depicts Kira leaving her side. Is it the scene imagined in the mind of Lars crying? 
How could they actually become adversaries in reality? We see Kira executing a multi lockdown. He's sweating at this moment. Could it be an expression of his reluctance of not wanting to shoot? Also, Kira's eyes are red in the scene. Could it really be Kira? In Gunnam Sea, there are beings like an odd purse who look strikingly similar to Kira. There are the fishery created combat humans called Saurus. And of course there's cloning technology, like in the case of Rawa Crate. A line from Mu Love Flavor is spoken. Kira, stop! What you're doing? A line from Ma Ramias is delivered. That's not a good move, Kira. Lastly, Lars Klein speaks. Please stop Kira's actions. The Archangel is enveloped in frames. Upon careful observation, emblems identical to those on Kira and Shin's helmets are depicted. It can be understood that they are appearing as official members of a new organization, distinct from both the Earth's Alliance and Taft. The promotional video ends here. There's more information available. Images of bonuses distributed in Japanese cinemas have been released. Beside Asran, both Kakali and Marin are present. The side of Kakali turning her face away is striking. Could it hint at the romantic drama revolving around Dathran? Then we see Shin and Liu Ashmi running energetically. Upon closer observation, parts of a mobile suit are visible in the bottom right. Could it be the phase shift armor in its inactive state? It might be a new mobile suit. A group photo of the characters has been released. Marin is standing between Athran and Kakali. We also see Isaac and Darker. The pilots of the Dom Trooper are also pictured. While they were side characters in Sea Destiny, perhaps they play a significant role in this narrative. Among the characters making their debut in the movie, there's someone who bears a striking resemblance to Mu Lok Flager in his younger days. He's the same person who appeared in the promotional video alongside Kagali. Could he be related to our dog Flager? Those to whom Lars crying and the others were born in the previous scenes are not included in this photo. If he has a connection with Mu or Creek, he will likely play a significant role in the story. Lastly, let me introduce a comment from director Mitsuo Fukuda. It seems a lot of information has been released all at once. Personally, I had hoped to release the details more gradually. That's because there are many more mobile suits appearing. The number of set models produced for this movie is immense. It's so vast that I'm hesitant to count and disclose it. The capability of our staff is truly remarkable. I wonder how many times more we prepared in comparison to other gunners. I'd say more, but I don't want to get in trouble with the company, so I'll leave it at that. Among the Gundam fans there were some who felt a bit uneasy about the Seed Freedom movie. This anxiety was tied to the fact that the production of Mobile Suit Gundam Hathaway was delayed due to the global pandemic. The concern was that because of the delaying Hathaway project for films that were previously abandoned, might have been restarted to maintain a continuous release of the Gundam series. Indeed, while not the most optimistic perspective when considering realistic and commercial aspects, it's not an unreasonable line of thought. However, with Mr. Mitsuo Fukuda's comments taken into account, perhaps those concerns have been alleviated. 
the highly skilled staff are diligently preparing an exceptionally large number of mobile suits for the film as fans. Let's look forward to the release and continue to support the Gundam Seed series. Until we meet again in the next episode.